the lab is approximately same it's saying exploiting path delimiters for web cache deception and we need to exfiltrate the api key for the carlos user we have one valid credential the username is wiener and the password is peter we have provided a list of possible delim delimiter characters to help you solve the lab okay no problem uh, we have other list too if you want you can go and download that from here so i'm just going to access the lab without wasting time and one more thing i want to do which is to enable the burp proxy on the browser okay so let's go we are going to log in first click on my account and the username is wiener and the password is peter don't save and as you can see on the profile page we have username wiener and his api key which is this now back to the burp suite and we can analyze each and every request so you can see there is there is no indication of cache okay no indication of the cache fine let's see because if we are going to try to check the vulnerability for web cache deception we need to see whether the cache mechanism in place or not so i'm going to explore more uh, to this application and i would like to go to each and every options and then we will see okay there is only home we can also try to put some comments but let's see uh, i just try to access the blog post and as you can see there is resource slash js slash tracking dot js so once i click on this request you can see within the response x cache miss that means because this is the first time we call this resource and because that response does not stored in the cache so we have miss here next time once we uh, try to access tracking.js within the 30 second of time we will get hit here okay so that means cache is in place cache is in place and there is uh, there is maybe some kind of rule for the js file so whenever we call js file that rules uh, comes into the picture and uh, cache mechanism is used for that resource fine so one thing is clear that there may be a rule cache rule for the dot js files and cache is in place these two things are confirmed now go back to the my account and i'm going to send this request to the repeater because we need to test few things and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna check same like what we did in the previous lab so slash a is df and send this request so there is uh, there is one difference between this lab and the previous lab in the previous lab once we try to put here something uh, we had the complete response with the profile page now here we are seeing one error that is not found which what is not found the profile information is not found because on this end point we get the profile information right so if i go back here you can see once we try to access my account after login our profile information was there okay this one but here in the repeater once we try to put some arbitrary uh, path and then we try to send the request we get not found what not found profile information is not found that means uh, the origin server the origin server does not abstract the path to my account fine uh, because of this so what else we can try maybe maybe because uh, this is another case for the web cache deception and we are checking for the web cache deception so we will check all the case one by one so what we can do uh, we can because we saw that a cache mechanism was there once uh, we try to access some kind of js files cache was there so let's see repeater 
and send this request. Now you can see the cache is appear here, but the problem is profile information is not there. And if profile information is not there, that means uh, we cannot exfiltrate anything. Okay. Because we are not getting any response from the origin server. I need to test here some delimiters. So for this, I'm going to send this request to the intruder, go to the intruder, clear all the positions. And instead of this slash, instead of this slash, what I'm going to do, I'm going to add here the position. Now go to the payloads and let's load the file. So I have here sec list. If you know, you can go to the GitHub and you can download this sec list, which contains a lot of word list for different purposes, like for discovery, web discovery, fuzzing, IOCs, miscellaneous, password, pattern matching, all of these. Uh, there are uh, different word lists for usernames, passwords, web shells and all. So if you go within the fuzzing, inside fuzzing, you will find here a special care dot text. So I load all the special characters that could be used as a delimiter. And then let's go and start the attack. But one thing to be noticed here, if you go to the uh, payload encoding, because I don't want these special characters to be URL encoded. So uncheck this, make sure this is unchecked and just go and start the attack. So as you can see, all of the status codes are 400. Okay. We found some 200 like this one and it's finished. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to filter it in the ascending order. And these two status codes are 200. That means origin server using these two delimiters, question mark and semicolon. And we will try this one by one. So let's say if I go to the question mark request and I see uh, the URL, you can see the question mark is placed here. Now, if we try to see the response, you can see within the response this time, instead of not found, instead of not found, we get here the profile information of the wiener of our profile information. So let's go. I'm going back to the repeater and instead of this slash, I'm going to put here question mark and send this request. So now you can see we get the complete profile information, but the problem is cache is not there. Cache disappear in this picture. So this means that the cache also uses this question mark. Okay. And because cache also using question mark as the delimiter. So it's not considering this uh, static uh, file extension dot js fine and you can see uh, we get here the complete profile information now let's try the second one which is semicolon and if we send this request let's see what gets changed and as you can see this time cache is there that means the cache does not use this semicolon as path delimiter so it is considering this semicolon character as a part of the URL. Okay. And as the part of the path. So it say it considering this thing as a file name and this is the JS file. And once this is the file name with the extension of JS, that means the JS cache rule is now in the picture. And in the response, we get cache uh, headers, response headers like X cache, cache control. Now, if we send this again, you can see miss because 30 second has been passed. Send it again. Now you can see because within the 30 second, uh, I try to access it again. So this response we are getting now from the cache, not from the origin server. And we also have our uh, profile information and this is what we need so up to this point we already find out the delimiter discrepancy 
between the cache and the origin server so let's go i am just going to the exploit server and now everything is easy we need to do what we did in the previous lab so script and we need to close the script tag and document dot location is equal to and within this we need to just put uh, we don't need this now and we just need this URL so right click and copy URL back here paste that and what we actually are going to do is we are going to victimize the Carlos user so we are going to send this specific malicious link to the Carlos user and once the Carlos user will access this link okay so because there is delimiter discrepancies so what will happen the cache will see okay this is the file name with the extension .js I need to take I need to see whether the response is already in the cache or not and because it is accessed by the Carlos and this is very arbitrary and randomized thing after after the my account so it will go to the origin server and because origin server already consider this semicolon as the delimiter so origin server will see okay I need to send the response with the profile information and because that request which is going from the Carlos user that contains the session cookie of the Carlos user so the server will serve the profile information of the Carlos and that response will be stored in the cache and after that once the attacker means us once we are going to access the same URL from the repeater within the 30 seconds after Carlos access this one we will get the Carlos profile page information and that contains the API key of the Carlos user I hope it's clear so let's go I'm going to store this and then I'm going to deliver this victim deliver this exploit to the victim and now let's go and see the access log whether Carlos click on this link or not up to now no let's refresh one more time because these all the IPs belong to me we should see here a different IP which is not up to now um, no not submit solution go to the exploit server one more time let's see if I make some mistake or what a script slash a script document dot location uh, fine let's uh, deliver it one more time go to the ex uh, access log no nope. Okay, we need to wait maybe. It's still not. Uh, well, I don't know what's the issue. And I'm going to store again and deliver the exploit to the victim one more time and let's just refresh the access logs uh, nope uh, let's try one more thing maybe this is the reason uh, instead of asdf i use asxzzz okay store it and deliver exploit to the victim one more time refresh the access log Uh, there is no sign of Carlos okay let's change it one more time a bit store it deliver exploit to victim 
back here refresh the page for access logs uh, where is mr carlos change this one more time and uh, we can try one more thing let's put here this is this is uh, for terminating this line okay so not not the delimiter this is in the java so store it and deliver the exploit try to access the access log nothing no one visited why Let's see. Back to the exploit server. And as you can see, this time Carlos uh, tried to access the exploit server without wasting time. Just go back to the exploit server and uh, just copy this file name and go to the repeater instead of ASDF. Just paste that file name and try to access from the repeater. Oh, miss. Miss means we will get winner. Uh, come on okay let's store one more time and deliver exploit to the victim try to see access log uh, yeah again Carlos try to access so this time we already have this so just go scroll down still wiener okay no problem so what we will do here is uh, back to the exploit server and just change this to a, a, a three times and we already get ready here three times okay so store uh, deliver exploit to the victim access log this is the third time so first second and third yeah we try to access the exploit server come back here and as you can see because we access aaa.js first time from the repeater but you can see we get the hit and it's saying 16 seconds already passed that means this time we should have carlos yeah we should have carlos and this is the Carlos API key. So I'm going to copy this back to the lab, submit solution and paste. Okay. And we solve the lab. So most important thing, don't rush, have patience and you will get the result. Sometimes because of the latency, because of the delay somewhere in my internet or maybe whatever but the thing is the response was delayed maybe uh, the packet lost but once the carlos user our victim get the link and he start accessing the malicious link we get the hit here so that's it for this lab i hope you enjoy the lab i hope you understand the concept and if you like the content please like subscribe and share I'm going to see you in the next lab. Bye.